Have you guys ever seen this disc? This mysterious disc is called the Disc of Phaistos. It's from the island of Crete in Greece. The writings on it are mysterious and it belongs to the Minoan civilization. Archaeologists, scientists, researchers haven't succeeded in deciphering the meaning of what's written on this disc. It is displayed in the Archaeological Museum of Heraklion or Heraklio, the capital of Crete. But today we're going to address the Minotaur. So much details about this story that it's hard to believe that it's a myth. The amount of details about every step. As an occultist, I'm always fascinated by ancient civilizations and ancient creatures, mythology. But the only way you can make up your own truth is to go look for it. You go after it. You're not going to find it in books. That's what I did with the Minotaur. I have heard and researched this story many, many times for years. But finally, I had the opportunity to go see the land for myself and visit where the Minotaur once lived. The Minotaur is a mythical creature from ancient Greece. Even the Greeks used to think it's a myth until the palace of Knossos in the island of Crete was excavated in the year 1900 by the British archaeologist Sir Arthur Evans. I was so curious that I decided to visit the island of Crete and the palace by myself to feel the energy and get a feeling of the Minoan civilization I'm clairvoyant, clairsentient, and clairaudient, and I can feel energy. I couldn't wait to visit this beautiful land, but I had no expectations. Crete was the hub of civilization before Athens rose to power. This was the land where the gods themselves resided. Even Zeus himself, the Greek god, was raised in Crete, in this land. The people who lived there were called the Minoans. And this is a name that the archaeologist Sir Arthur Evans gave them after their king Minos, the half-god, half-human that ruled over Crete. King Minos was the son of Zeus and Europa, a very beautiful human woman. She was a Phoenician princess and Zeus fell in love with her. According to ancient Greek Cretan legend, Zeus appeared to Europa as the most beautiful white bull and abducted her to the island of Crete, where he was raised. Here we already have the mention of a white bull, but it seems like history found a way to repeat itself, but in a much more tragic way. Europa eventually not only became a Cretan moon goddess, but the whole continent of Europe was named after her. You can even see her face imprinted in the Euro Bills currency nowadays. I am not sure if you can see it here. You can find Europa, her face, in two sides of the bill. One is here, I'm not sure if you can see it. And the other one is right here. That is not Mother Mary, that's Europa. So having a whole continent and a currency named after a mythical goddess shows us and tells us that 
it was probably not a myth. Zeus and Europa had three sons. One of them was Minos, fearing that his brother is gonna rule over Crete. Minos asked his god uncle Poseidon, this guy right here, the mighty Poseidon, he asked him to guarantee his rule over Crete. He wanted the throne. Poseidon accepted, but in return, he had one condition. He gave Minos a mesmerizing, stunning, beautiful white bull. Again, here we have the mention of a beautiful white bull. And he told Minos to sacrifice the white bull in return for the Cretan throne. The bull was so stunning and everyone was impressed by how beautiful this bull was. So Minos decided to keep the bull for himself as a status kind of thing and sacrifice another bull. The mighty Poseidon of course knew what Minos plotted. So he decided to punish Minos and as a punishment he made Minos' wife the queen of Crete, fall in love with the bull. Poseidon simply said, it seems like you love this white bull too much to sacrifice it for me. So let's see how your wife is gonna love him. And he made his wife fall in love with the bull, believe it or not. Minus' wife found a way to mate with the bull. Nine months later, a demonic creature, half bull, half man, was born the Minotaur. Minotaur in Greek simply means the bull of Minos. Minotaurus. King Minos was furious when he saw the creature and he decided to use him for his own benefit as a tool, as a weapon against his enemies. Since Crete and Athens were at war, especially after the Athenians murdered one of Minos' sons, Minos decided to take revenge on the Athenians and use the Minotaur for that. Minos ordered his most talented, gifted architect and designer, Didalus, to build the most complex labyrinth that's going to house the Minotaur. This is the first labyrinth in human history that was ever built. And yes, we're talking about Daedalus, the father of Icarus, who flew too close to the sun. Daedalus, along with Icarus, together, under the command of King Minos in Crete, they built one of the most astonishing labyrinths that no one has ever seen. And it became home to the Minotaur. This was tragic because now this innocent creature has become the most feared demon in all of Greece and Crete. People were scared of the Minoans. They were scared of Crete. No one dared to fight or provoke King Minos. But this was not the end of the story. Now that the labyrinth was built, King Minos ordered Athens to send seven men and seven women every nine years to be sacrificed as a punishment for murdering his son. The Athenians under King Aegeus of Athens had no choice but to send the seven men and the seven women every nine years. These men and women would be sacrificed, they would be thrown in the labyrinth and the Minotaur would hunt them down, kill them, and even devour them. This powerful demon was dreadful, and no one was able to challenge it or defeat it for years and years. The sacrifice continue, and Crete, under the rule of King Minos, thrived in that era. Until the day King Aegeus of Athens had a son, another demigod, that was basically interbred between King Aegeus, his wife, and Poseidon again. This demigod was called Theseus. 
being a powerful demigod, having Poseidon as a father, the king of Athens was certain that Theseus can beat the Minotaur. Theseus wanted the challenge, he accepted it, and he wanted to prove his father that he was a worthy prince that will eventually become king. So it was time to send the seven men and seven women to be sacrificed to Crete. Theseus, the son of Aegeus from Athens, went undercover as one of the men to be sacrificed. When they arrived to Crete, the daughter of King Minos saw Theseus and fell in love at first sight. She didn't want him to be killed by the Minotaur. She wanted to marry him. She loved him. So she decided to help him. She talked to one of the architects of the labyrinth and asked of a way out. Since she is the princess of Crete, they told her a way to get out of the labyrinth which is basically using a thread, attaching it to the entrance of the labyrinth, and on the way back, following the thread until finding the way out. This was the first time this trick was used, and it was adopted in many movies, in many stories throughout history. The princess of Crete, because she loved Theseus at first sight, she found a way to meet him in secrecy, and she told him, how to get out of the labyrinth, she gave him the thread and she prayed that he would not be killed by the Minotaur. Now it was time for the Athenian prince and his comrades to be sacrificed, but he had a sword hidden underneath his cloth that he managed to carry without being noticed. Theseus was confident, knowing that he's a demigod and that his father is Poseidon, even though Poseidon caused all of this, he knew that he could beat the Minotaur. With his sword, he found the Minotaur, fought him, and killed him. This was the first time anybody was able to enter the labyrinth with a weapon anyways. So Theseus, because he had a sword with him, was able to defeat the Minotaur. And as per the prince's instructions, he followed the thread back to the entrance of the labyrinth with his comrades from Athens and they sailed back to Athens and not only that now he had a wife and a princess but this story ends in a very ironic way before Theseus left Athens his father Aegeus asked him to raise a white sail on his way back as a sign of his victory over the Minotaur. But Theseus, because he was so excited and happy that he beat the Minotaur, and he also met a lover, and he was bringing a wife with him back home, he forgot his father's request. Since he left Athens, many, many months have passed, and King Aegeus of Athens was every morning checking if his son is returning. So every morning he would go to the shore and see if his son's boat is arriving or not. Until one day, he actually spotted his son's boat. However, the sail was black because Theseus forgot to raise the white sail. His father, King Aegeus, thought that his son was killed and eaten by the Minotaur from depression and sorrow and anger, he killed himself in the sea. And that's where the name the Aegean Sea come from. It's after King Aegeus who killed himself in that sea. It's not how many people think it's not the Asian Sea. It's the Aegean Sea named after King Aegeus of Athens. Eventually, Theseus becomes king of Athens with his Cretan wife. And since the defeat of the Minotaur, Crete and Minos and the Minoans are going to lose their civilization, lose their power. Athens will take over and become the new power of Greece. Now, this is very ironic because it seems like the Minotaur was giving Crete this power. It was allowing it to thrive because the enemy didn't dare to attack or offend the Cretans or the Minoans. 
Crete fell under the Athenians and the Minoan civilization became a thing of the past. This was a myth, even for the ancient Greeks, until this palace of Knossos was excavated. They even found tablets with very ancient writings that state Minos in them, as in King Minos. So here we notice something that was a mere myth, even for the ancient people. And the more archaeologists and researchers do discover and uncover new evidence, the more we realize that the myth has a lot of truth to it. When I was on site in the palace of Knossos, it was clear that that palace was no regular, normal palace. That the way it was designed did look like a labyrinth. It was so many interlocking walls. Everything looked like it didn't make sense. And apparently it has thousands of rooms. Thousands, not hundreds, thousands underground. And as you can see here in the footage, this clearly looks like a maze. It does not look like a palace. The palace maybe was on top, but underground was the maze where the Minotaur resided. The energy was kind of spooky, it was hard to feel with the amount of tourists there, but I did feel that a lot of souls were killed there, and a lot of sacrifices were done there as well. You can also notice the bull imagery everywhere in the palace of Knossos. As you can see here, this is the famous bull engraving on the wall and this stone here is a representation of the bull horns and this coincides with people worshipping the bull in ancient history in many places around the world. In India, the Mesopotamians, the Israelites, they used to worship the bull in the Middle East. I think it started here with the Minotaur. The worship of the bull is a thing that started with the Minotaur. In addition to Zeus showing up to Europa as a white bull, it's very intriguing. Why would Zeus show up as a bull? Also, Poseidon offering a bull to be sacrificed. So there's a lot of mysteries around the bull, but it was definitely something worshipped in this land it was something to be reckoned with. It's part of the human history. Even the disc of Phaistos, how it is designed. The writings are obviously very old and we cannot decipher them, but it is designed as a labyrinth, as a proof that there was a maze in Knossos and that the Minotaur resided there. The amount of artifacts that I saw in the Archaeological Museum of Heraklion that had bull statuettes and statues and the amount of um, drawings that have bull in them. The Minons also did something called bull leaping as entertainment where uh, acrobatic men and women, they would hold the horns of a bull and do flips and all sorts of acrobatics as they hold the horns of the bull. So there was a lot revolving around bulls in this land. And the museum has so much evidence of that, as you can see here in the screen. This stuff is very fascinating for me. One way to uncover history and to see if the legends and myths are fully real or partially real is to go and see for yourself. You can read a thousand book about the Minotaur or about the Minoans or Crete or the Palace of Knossos, but you can only become certain with your own truth if you visit and feel the energy. So I wanted to share this with you. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comment section what do you think of the Minotaur? If this video came your way, I want to know if it's something that you were interested in or if it's something you've read about. Let me know and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.